What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel and today we're going to have another what's on the wall episode. This time it's going to be something custom. Um, I have a few custom cars in here that I want to cover and this is one of the first ones. Well, one of the first ones I'm going to cover. So this is my Grasshopper 2 turned into a Mad Max style buggy. So we'll get into kind of what all transpired here but real quick I just want to give you guys kind of a little quick history update on the Grasshopper 2. So the original Grasshopper 2 came out in 1988 on part number 58074 and in that kit it had the new design Grasshopper 2 body. It still retained the stock friction shocks up front but did come with some oil filled dampers in the rear which made an improvement over the standard Grasshopper. Now in 89 they released the Super G which also kind of came out with the oil field dampers, a different body design, and then it still retained the springs on the front. In 1993, the Super Cornet came out, and that got oil field shocks all the way around. So different body design and oil field shocks all the way around. Then in 2008, they came out with the Rising Fighter. So again, different body design, but this one came out with um, factory friction shocks all the way around. So they look like oil dampers up front and in the rear, but they were actually just blue friction shocks. Um, now in 2001, they released the Black Edition that was the same body and sticker design as the original, just in the different colors. And that came out in 2001 with um, front and rear oil field dampers on it. Um, that's probably the most common, the most liked one. Um, the body looks a little bit better. It comes with the gray wheels, front and rear, and it also comes with the gray CVAs all the way around, so definitely helps out. Now, the you can still get the re-release of the Grasshopper 2 on part number 58643, and usually it's a dash A if you're in Northern America, because that's the one that comes with the um, Hobbywing ESC. So anyway, let's dive down into what the heck happened here. For a while, I had wanted to do some kind of custom one-off Mad Max theme buggy. And I didn't know, or truck or buggy or what. I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I wanted to do something. So why not go with one of the cheapest kits out here? I think you still buy the Grasshopper 2s for like 109, 110 bucks um, from hobby, um, from Tower Hobbies and A-Main. Um, but, you know, I wanted something with a nice looking shell and you know, a decent overall chassis that was easy to build and easy to work with, but also gave me room and areas to put stuff. So after some pondering and some thought, the idea of the saw blades popped into my head. And, you know, I started looking around and just decided we're going to go on a buggy. We're going to, you know, put some saw blades on there. We're going to call it rip saw. Really didn't have a game plan other than buggy and saw blades. The rest of it was just made up after I sat down and started playing with it. So the saw blades are made out of just some um, styrene board. Um, I can't remember what thickness, uh, don't remember. Uh, basically just found some silhouette images of saw blades online, downloaded the pictures, sized them up the way I wanted them, printed them out on paper, took some glue stick, stuck it right down to the styrene and cut these out on my little um, scroll saw. So all I do is cut the teeth out and then I basically segmented the blades into thirds. So you just literally draw a triangle in the middle and I just cut off the third, so I made two saw blades, and that gave me six pieces to glue on. Um, this little piece up here that kind of looks like some kind of weird turbo is a spare off parts tree of, like, the Thundershot chassis. I guess it was a gear cover at some point, um, but it's just an extra on that parts tree. It's got random pieces of diamond plate cut out, and I'll put some up-close pictures at the end so you guys can see it up close. But the little random pieces of diamond plate were cut out and cut into like irregular shapes to both fit the body and to look like patch panels. Um, the blower is an extra um, blower scoop from the Clodbuster builds. Um, there's actually a little filler piece back here that I made, which was out of the Tamiya tank kit. It's like the speaker box enclosure that it doesn't come with a speaker, but you get a speaker box cut out for it. Um, these little turbo pods on the side are just some little pieces off a of dollar store action figures that I had. <clears throat> um, we have some Cat5 cabling running down the side. We've got little fuel tanks down here. So there's a, an oxygen and an acetylene, um, basically torch tanks that I'm using as, you know, fuel tanks for this. And 
All these are, are those little CO2 cartridges for like a BB gun pistol. And then to make the um, tubing coming off of them, I took some old RCA cable pieces and cut them apart and stuffed them right on the end and looped those up. Um, it's got some jewelry um, chain from the hobby store on here that was just randomly glued on to, you know, add some character to it. Uh, let's see, what else do we add on to it? Oh, there's a little heat sink off of just some random electronic that died. Um, I did paint the entire chassis. So we just sealed the chassis with some Mr. Super Clear, clear um, varnish. And then I just airbrushed over a mixture of like a gray and a mixture of a tan. And just kind of just randomly just, you know, just dips, dips, dips and, dips, and a little bit over here. And came up with, you know, what looks like a weathered up chassis. I even left the motor in there and just sprayed the motor. Now I did put a little bit of this blue poster tack in the motor slots to keep me from actually painting into the motor and, you know, covering the armature and everything. Um, we did make a full interior out of styrene and there is a driver guy in there. Um, he's a dollar store action figure. Um, uh, basically the entire cockpit is just made out of styrene and some random uh, gravely bits off of different parts trees from either a model or RC. Um, we have a linkage here for the um, blower, which is just a scrap piece of linkage and a um, tiny little servo horn. So we have the little vroom vroom stick over here to make it run. Um, so obviously the big difference between the Grasshopper 2 and this are these big old chunk tires. So we have um, lunchbox wheels and tires in the rear. I actually have the kit front wheels up here. So we have the, sp the spoke uh, stock wheels for the fronts but I put the rear tires on the front. So the, the wheels are really narrow, but the tires are really wide. So you can see how wide the front tires are, but they're actually riding on the stock front wheels. Now you do have to glue those to keep them on, but we just painted the wheels, um, basically just painted them black and then just started sponge stippling. Um, we got browns, we've got greens, we've got reds, we've got tans. Um, touch of silver here and there to just make them look like rusty, crusty, um, you know, wasteland stuff. Um, as far as the paint goes, um, there was a happy accident there. So we had a Bob Ross incident. Um, I was using basically a heavy filler primer <clears throat> and I never used this one before. So I s sprayed it on and there was a spot to where it got a run in it. And I think it was like on the side somewhere. Oh, I think it was right here. So I believe I got a run like right here. And it was just this big, heavy sag. You know, I just accidentally went over the spot too many times and just got a big, heavy sag in there. So I thought, okay, it's just primer. Take the air gun, you know, just and blow off all that excess paint. Well, by doing so, it basically gave me this really cool reaction to where the paint, like, rippled and crinkled and almost dried in place. So it basically gave me instant texture. So, you know... At first, I was like, oh, no. And I looked at him. I was like, oh, yeah. So I just started going, eh, eh, and just putting it really heavy in spots intentionally, and then just blasting with the air gun. So it actually has a big, heavy, rusty, crusty texture to it. And then I just sprayed the whole thing in black. And then we went with the same gray and tan airbrushing, because I still had the paint left, airbrushed over top of it. And then I sealed all that, and then I went back over top and started adding the um, rust texture. Uh, one of the things I did with the saw blades is there's actually a um, material for gaming miniatures. It's basically you can make mud. Uh, so if you're making scenes or if you're making bases for your little gaming figures, you can actually make like muddy texture. And the stuff that I have is like a really sandy, gloppy texture. It's almost making mixing paint with like a, um, a sanded grout or something. It's that kind of texture. So I just painted some of that on to the blades and then just went over them with like a rust wash and then sponge painted some stuff on there. But basically most of it is just rust colored paint and reds and grays and browns and blacks that I just kind of either stippled on with a nasty brush or chunk of foam and then just kind of sprayed it a little bit with some rust wash and then finally just seal coated everything with the flat uh, Mr. Super Clear to just seal everything in and keep it the way we wanted it. 
Um, you know, I even added little chains in the back. I don't know if you guys can see them, but there's like little chains hanging down underneath the body and stuff. Um, in hindsight, I would not have put the chains up front. Um, I've had to like super glue the bejesus out of that to get those to stay on there, and they've you know come loose a couple times. This bumper is such a flexible plastic that pretty much the glue just wants to pop off of it. So those may end up coming off, but all these chains are glued on really nice and well. And you know, I basically just you know wove it through, zigzagged it, and then just dropped a few little drops of super glue in the corners to hold it all in. <coughs> But yeah, if you want to see kind of the whole, you know, video of it, which I basically gave you the thumbnail of it here, you know, there'll be a link here um, for kind of the build video series of it. And then, um, you know, we'll try to put another, you know, one like here as well to if you want to go look at, you know, this actually running around and everything. It was a really fun build and, you know, it's a really inexpensive chassis to work on. Um, parts are like readily available. Um, it is a nice little chassis. If you wanted to, you know, have a better running one, you get the black edition to get the oil filled shocks, or you could just put the oil filled shocks on it. Um, but you know, for the most part, this was going to be a static type thing. I do run it occasionally. Um, it has all the running gear in there, ready to go. Uh, just got to pop a battery in and run it. But you know, for the most part, this was a can can we do it type project, and I think I did a pretty good job. I think it came out pretty well. Um, I love the little you know, oxygen and acetylene tanks underneath, you know, I thought those were a cool little touch. But anyway, I'll wrap this up with kind of some photos of this once it was done, uh, get you guys some up close pictures of it. But everybody out there, you guys be happy, be healthy, be safe, and enjoy the rest of your weekend. See you.